Good morning. I'm Andrea with Happy Cloud Creations. Let's see. Today, I am going over week four of the Prismatic Party Quilt Along. Um, this week, we will be making four of block three, um, which is basically these outer blocks. So the first week, we made our center block. And last week we made these large blooms. This week we'll be making these star blocks. So if you have any questions, um, please let me know. If you jump on, say hi. Hello, Linda. I'm pretty sure I can see com I can see comments on Instagram. I'm not sure about Facebook yet. So if you jump on, let me know. I'm on both today. Hoping it works out. Um all right, so if you have any questions, let me know. Um, last week, there were a couple corrections to the pattern. If you did not catch that, if you were making the king size on page 10, there is a correction for step two and step three. Let's see. Page 10, step two, step three. Step two should say color E, eight five by five, not five and a half. And then step three should be color E, eight five by five inch squares. So if you're making the king size, make sure to make a note on those two. You can always find any pattern corrections on my website, happycloudcreations.com, and then you click pattern collection corrections or updates, and that'll give you any corrections have been done to any of my patterns all right so let's see this one is pretty simple block so if you were like me and you made all of your um flying geese ahead of time you have very little work to do this week but if you have not made those flying geese yet that's fine um first you want to make your flying geese for the block or i guess you can wait till you get to that step because the first um, thing in the pattern says to make your diamond and square. So if you made that diamond and square on the first week and you're like, I hate that. I don't like diamond and squares. You could always just, um, because the diamond square involves a square block and then you're adding to it, right? So if you're like, I don't like that, um, you can just leave it a square, just a solid square in the center instead of making a diamond if that's easier for you. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Mom. Hello, Lenora. Um, so um, if you're worried about, you know, it was too hard, you can just leave it a square and it'll still look really cute. Um, so I'm going to go over that, the step how to make that diamond and square just one more time. Um, what you first do is make sure you're looking for your size and it's going to tell you the specific size pieces for your size. And you're going to draw diagonal lines. Um, I typically will use a hair marker, which just leaves a um, line on your fabric. Some fabrics it's harder to see than others. Um, my old go-to was a disappearing ink pen. This is what I've been talking about. I just forgot to grab it out of my um, drawer. So you're going to want to find the one that says disappearing, um, air, or water soluble because... Um, if it's, I heard of people using the friction pens and the only problem with the friction pen is if you never wash that quilt and, um, it gets hot or it changes temperatures, the lines can reappear, I guess. Um, I know this one, when you use it, sometimes if you iron it, like if your lines have disappeared and you haven't washed it yet, if you iron it, the lines will reappear. But once you wash it, the water will wash all of the ink out. Um, I used to always use this. It's just they dry up so fast. So I just stopped using that and started using this for lines. This I'll still use for like when I'm tracing coffee cozies and stuff like that. So I still like to have these on hand. Um, so you'll draw your line and then you're just going to line your needle up right against that line. Um, depending how thick your line is. If your line is very thick, you're going to want to chomp right into the side of that line. If your line's really thin, still just go right next to it. And um, that way, once you stitch your line 
and then you go to press this open, finger press it open, you'll see that all the triangles match up in the corner. And that's a good way to make sure they're matching up is press it, finger press it open and then press it with your iron. And then you can go back and snip these extra layers out. Um, if it ends up not lining up completely to the edges, like say this ends up being smaller, you can leave this backing fabric just um, to reduce some bulk, snip out the center and let's see, I'll show you. Like you're gonna just wanna snip out the center about fourth inch. And then say this doesn't line up fully like that maybe. Um, you'll know where to sew your block together because um, you're gonna want it to be a perfect square. So does that make sense? Like just make sure that this is square. So once you got that done and you trim them and you press them, you're gonna add your second two squares and you're gonna do the same thing. Draw a line from top to bottom of your little squares and then you're gonna chomp right into the sides and then trim them off and press them open. Um, if you do have a darker color little wings instead of the center you could um or if you're i mean your center is really dark and your um sides are really light you could press inward um i just always press outward you can't really tell that bad that the it's a dark yellow um once it's all quilted up you don't really notice um but this i go and i like to make sure it's the right size we want to make sure it's four and a half by four and a half. If there's any little pieces that are like tiny jetting out, I like to trim those up to make sure it's a perfect square. So we got this square now, okay? And then the next step is basically, if you haven't made your flying geese yet, you'll go back to that flying geese page. On what pages are those? My laptop's really hot. Um. Flying geese, four at one time is on page six, and then one at one time is on page seven. Um, and if you haven't made those yet and you haven't cut out your fabric yet, if you really did not like those four at one time flying geese, you can try the one at one time. Um, I feel like that's probably an easier method for a beginner quilter because you know, you're know you just basically doing the same thing. You're stitching and flipping, and that might be easier to make a more accurate flying geese than that four at one time. The four at one time does take a lot of practice and especially when you're trimming it to size. So when we got all of our flying geese done, um, we're gonna attach the two small squares to the side of two of them for one block. We're gonna be making four blocks so I went ahead and just attached them to eight of them because we're gonna need two times four is eight. So we're gonna need eight of these little guys. And then you're gonna attach to your four um, diamond and squares, or if you wanted to just keep it a square, you can do that. Um, we're gonna attach two of these to the sides. And I forgot to mention on week um, one or two, um, a trick I have for lining them up. So what I usually do is I'll take a, if I can pick it up. This thumb isn't very good at picking things up. Um, what I do is I take a pin and I'll poke it right through, if you can see, the top of my triangle. And then I'll go to this triangle and I'll take that pin and poke it through so that they line up perfectly and then I'll go ahead and pin these sides and then I'll pin the center before I go and sew it. Um, that helps those points get lined up well. You can also um, take Elmer's washable glue. I forgot to grab it, it's up in my cupboard. It's the school glue, it's washable. And you can um, put a little dot of that glue right here at the top of your triangle. Um, and then press those together and press it with an iron to make it dry. Um, the only problem with using glue, I like using that to line up my points. The only thing is if you want to 
um, when you're done making this block, if you want to press it open, it makes it a little more difficult to press open if you've glued it shut. Um, but when you just use a pin and line them up, um, it's a lot easier to open it up. So I'll show you like, so the bulk is a lot less when I um, pressed my seams open here than up here when I pressed it down. You can just, I don't know if you can see the bulk. <laughs> it's kind of hard, but you can feel um, that it's a lot less bulk. Um, I typically do not press my seams open. I will press it one way or another, but when there's two little points coming together, sometimes it is better to press the seam open. Um, the only time I wouldn't recommend pressing seams open is if you like to stitch in the ditch when you quilt your quilt. Because if you're stitching in the ditch, there's nothing to grab on to that. I never stitch in the ditch just because my needle does not stay in the ditch. Um, because I end up quilting too fast. So um, I typically will take my foot and line up my foot with the ditch. And so I kind of stitch a fourth inch from my seams um, instead of stitching in the ditch. So this is my final block. Voila! Ta-da, voila. Um, so it still would be cute if you just left this as center as a square, but I really like the diamond. Does anybody have any questions about this block? It's pretty easy since you got, if you got all your flying geese are done, it's gonna go together super quick. So if you haven't started this quilt along yet, um, you'll definitely be able to catch up really quickly. I know uh, a few people have just started, so, um, Ta-da, it will go together super quick. Thank you, thank you, mom. Uh, I really love this tiny fabric. It's like, I wanna buy more and make more things with it. I just love it. Um, if there's no questions, so next week, we will be going over block, I'm getting confused, block four, week five, block four, which is this one on top. Um, We'll be making four of those. And then the following week, we'll be making eight of these other guys. So um, if you haven't finished all your flying geese for the rest of the pattern, maybe if you finish these guys really quick this week, you could finish your flying geese for next week. Um, that way, when it comes to making eight of these guys, um, you won't get behind. Um, I'm loving seeing everybody's quilts in the quilts along group and on Instagram. I think there's a lot more people posting on the quilts along group. So if you're on face or on Instagram, you have a Facebook account, you should join that quilts along group because a lot of people are posting their photos over there. Um, a couple of people have actually already finished their quilt tops. Uh, I think they were just like had extra time on the weekend and they went ahead and finished their whole quilt top. So it's really cool seeing everybody's blocks. I'm so happy you guys were able to join in. Uh, if you ever have any questions, you can email me at happycloudcreations at gmail.com. Or you can just put a message in the Facebook group or on Instagram. Um, you could send me a private message through my Happy Cloud Creation account. If you send it to my Andrea Smith account, um, it sends it to like this, you don't know this person account and I don't get those messages. So make sure to send it to the Happy Cloud Creations. So I hope you guys have a great day and I can't wait to see all of your block three. So here's my block three, my block one, and my block two. All right, you guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Oh, I'll be on here next Tuesday, 10 a.m. again. So, all right.